All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. Good to be live on this wonderful uh, Friday. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to talk about typography manipulation and dealing with type in Photoshop, which really gives you the most control when it comes to typography. So uh, Lindsay, AJ, Miguel, William, everyone, I really appreciate you hanging out with me. It's going to be a fantastic day. And uh, I want to kind of click through this. So let me just kind of show you what I'm going to cover. Um, see right here, uh, just the whole idea of uh, diving into this and really just starting with the fundamentals. Because honestly, if you start with the wrong font, uh, then it's not going to work. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how much you try to make it look pretty. It's like lipstick on a pig, so they say. So we're going to talk about selecting the right font, using alternate glyphs. Sorry, I misspelled that. Clearly my fault. Uh, manipulating text non-destructively as well, because chances are I'm going to misspell something just like I did in that bullet point. So being able to go back and non-destructively like edit the text, that sort of thing. So hopefully this sounds good to you, Axel and Bobby. Please say hello, say hello to me. Uh, good, good, good. Thank you so much for the, all these warm welcomes. Uh, Steve from New Zealand and everyone. And you're right, papyrus is the answer always when it comes to picking a font. That's right. Um, we're going to create some 3D text effects. Uh, just It's going to blow you away. And I get it. We have a dimension. We can, I can show you how to use dimension. I'm talking about Photoshop here, and it's fantastic. And compositing with imagery. Yes, glyphs. I made glyphs. Let's make some glyphs. <laughs> Awesome, from San Francisco. Carla, you are at yeah, 935 over there. So let's go ahead and uh, switch screens. I'll kind of show you um, some, of the, some of the goodness that we're going to work on, just so you know. As I switch over, you can see right here. Uh, here's just some examples of like the crazy stuff, of course, that you know you can do with type, right? Everything from just picking the right font to manipulating that text, right? Manipulating it further, integrating it with photos, right? Integrating it with imagery, that sort of thing. Uh, and then even this fun 3D stuff. Isn't this cool? Like this whole idea right over here, zoop. You know, just doing stuff like this. How do you do this? Is this Illustrator? No, it's not. It's not Illustrator. What about this? These typography, oh, sorry about that. Typography portraits that you see like all over the web, and I think they were hot a couple years ago. I can knock that out and super fast. Displacement map done and done. So that's what we're gonna work on. Thank you so much, Franklin and Iggy. Let's keep the conversation going. Uh, I love chatting with you, and uh, yeah, love uh, love hanging out uh, with you and just kind of showing cool things, right? and things that uh, hopefully will help you at the end of the day. We're looking at making the world a more beautiful place. All right. Oh, Eric Sue, mm, I bow your direction. Thank you so much, my friend. So let's talk about uh, sort of picking a subject matter. The font's always going to be driven by the subject matter. So you never want to pick a font uh, that doesn't relate to what your overall objective is, right? So if we're making sort of a, a poster for Beauty and the Beast, which is, uh, you know, going to be a play, what would that play poster look like, right? So how would we execute that? Well, we want to, this is really fun, but I like the contrast of uh, having these, you know, two different ideas. We have this word beast, you know, and I just typed in some text. It's like Calibri, I think is the, or is it Myriad? Myriad's the default font. Like how do, what do we do in these cases? I, I wanna execute this two different ways and talk through this. Hopefully that works for you, Amina, from Tunisia. Fantastic. Ugh. I'm too, have I had too much coffee? Huh. I'm all, I'm all wired. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's kind of dive into this. There's a couple different ways we could do this. I have these fonts. I've just used the, uh, the horizontal type tool. This is the one you're gonna use 99% of the time. I get it, there's other options in here. Horizontal type tool is just the type tool. If you select the vertical type tool, of course, it's gonna go down. So beauty, right, you get the idea. It's gonna go downward like that. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be using the horizontal type tool. These other type tools, which are like vertical type mass tool, horizontal type mass, these are kind of like remnants from, uh, fr f from before the time that you can actually edit text. But we don't wanna do this because this actually means 
uh, a non-destructive workflow. And yeah, there's a banana right next to me. Hmm. Yeah, that's weird. So don't worry, uh, honestly, I, I, I'm hard pressed to come up with a reason why you would use these two. If you know Eric or Marissa or anyone, I can't, I don't get it because it's not editable. So nine times out of 10, use horizontal type tool. You type in what you want, type in beauty, right? Well, uh, I wanna show you the properties panel because the properties panel is sort of like your, your first class citizen now, right? It's always going to be contextual, like Illustrator. So again, Calibri is the font, right? I can go through and say, okay, well, for beauty, do we want to have Calibri? Do we want to uh, kind of roll through these different fonts? And we can do that. Bah, 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 bah. You get the idea. Or do we want to sort? Uh, do we want to sort these fonts? Uh, maybe a little better. But I'm going to go through this really fast. Uh, so I'm going to go through and, and show you. So I had this acumen variable concept font. And really the whole idea is like you'll be scrolling through these different fonts. You'll be like, oh, I really like uh, this font, Adorn. And then I'll just flag it right down here. Boom, flagged. Now it will be in my list of commonly favorited fonts. But I'm going to go to this variable concept font. Variable fonts, if you can get a hold of them, they're fantastic because it's like having 50 uh, uh, fonts in one. And thank you so much, Nora. I think that's a great idea. I'm going to do a really simple execution and then I'm going to do a more elaborate execution where I'm going to be seeking out your opinion on where, what we do for beauty. So beauty, we could approach this a couple different ways. I'm going to do two different designs. Beauty, acumen, variable concept. It's like, oh, that's kind of boring. But the thing is, is like I have this option right over here to adjust the weight, the width, the slant, all that stuff. So we can make beauty look elegant. It doesn't have to be a script font because people see melinda melinda i get what you're saying you're like cursive for sure and i'm saying cursive is actually the easy answer and to do something maybe that is more elegant that doesn't say cursive or script is what i'm going for right now and then i'm going to dive into something more advanced so again here's beauty notice how this does actually look very elegant when you have it nice and thin like this I made this look nice and elegant personally. I think it looks elegant. And then we can do the same thing for these other fonts. Let's go to Acumen, Variable Concept. And, and maybe you'll think this is horrible, by the way. <laughs> Please don't. Because I'm designing live. That's the whole goal of this, is just to design live. You know, as I shrink this down, it's the same weight as beauty, but I know since it's gonna be smaller, it's not gonna have less prominence, I need to beef up the weight. So when it comes to matching these fonts, I wanna have this thickness, the same thickness, like that, okay? And I can nest that right on the same baseline, right? We can take beast, again, taking beast, we'll do my acumen variable concept font. What do we wanna do for beast? We want it big and bulky and, I don't know, mean looking, you know, and amp it up like that, right? So this is just one execution for Beauty and the Beast, right? There's more that I'm going to do not to worry. Please don't think, again, I'm starting out with the fundamentals, right? Beauty and the Beast, there we go. In fact, I would consider even taking this Beauty and maybe it does have a little bit of a slant to it as well. Just a thought, okay? These are just concepts because this is... Uh, this is all we're doing is just kind of reviewing some of our concepts that we can work through, right? And all I'm saying is Beast doesn't have to be your scratchy font. Beauty doesn't have to be uh, your script font. Uh, I encourage you, uh, more often than not, I end up with doing the fundamentals kind of like this. And then I would actually have imagery potentially within the type to convey what I want to convey. Right, so in this case, what if I take Beast, here's an idea, you ready for this? What if I put an image inside of it, or what if I tear at it or something? Interesting, interesting. Here, let's, let's pull in these eyes, for instance. Taking a basic font and I'm already combining it with an image, right? So these are the eyes. I wanna put the eyes inside of Beast, right? It just means adding a clipping mask right in here 
uh, I hold down the Alt key or Option key, right? And then it gets clipped to that text beast. And now we have those eyes inside. So this is just an option. Um, yes, Christian. Oh, I love where your head's at. That's exactly right. Tear at it. Do something unique with it. Uh, I put an image in here. It's kind of hard to read. I probably need to shrink it down. Uh, try to make those eyes a little bit more legible. And again, this is one concept. So that's what I do. Command G to group it. This is group or concept one, right? And then I'll just duplicate that layer as well and make concept number two, which might be a tear, but I'm gonna get into more details as well. Since you said tear, I happen to have a black and white tear right here. We could do the same thing coming in here. Let's get rid of the eyes. Boop. Let's play with blend modes. Why not? <clears throat> looking for something I'm literally just like playing right now something like that could even work beauty and the beast like it's gets torn at right so we have a second concept uh, compliments of Christian my uh, Meisner awesome so great idea Great idea. I absolutely love it. Beauty and the Beast. Let's go to something a little bit more in depth, by the way. Let's mix it up some more. Duplicating this again. Concept number three. We'll try it. We will try the fun fonts, right? So we could take beauty. Actually, let's take the word beast, by the way. I'm going to show you this fun font. Going in here, we have the option to go beyond... Um, actually, let's, let's select the word beauty to go beyond uh, just our sans serif and all that fun stuff, we have classes right in here. I can say, hey, you know what? Show me all the script font, because I know you're asking for it. Script font, boop. What do we do? We roll through here. Help me find a beautiful font. Ba 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 ba. What do we go with? Ah. <sighs> this is where I zone out. I'm gonna go with Bickham Script Pro for a reason. Okay, so let's go to with Bickham Script Pro. Let's crank this up so everybody can see it. Beauty. Pretty good, right? I'd say that looks pretty good. Well, I wanna introduce you to the alternate gl uh, glyphs, as I said earlier, alternate glyphs. So right in here, selecting that Y. Sorry, this is awfully large, let's move it up. As I select this Y, I get these alternate glyphs right down here Whoop. as I roll over this square. So these are my alternates, and this is why I um, selected Bickham Script Pro. So Christian, write this down. Bobby, Sarah, write this down. I can go into these all these fun versions of this Y. So let's just do it. Boom. Hey, that's kind of cool, right? That might be an alternative. This might be an alternative. This might be an alternative. Look at that gorgeous it's gorgeous yes carla knows what i'm talking about when you start looking for a font sometimes you just zone out and you're just like i'm gonna be lost in this for a couple days right but this is the idea in fact i can check these out maybe a little more closely by the way let's move that down shrink it down not a big deal i love that it's constrained um if you open up the glyphs panel there's an actual glyphs panel right in here and you can see the different options. Um, not f You could see the whole font, quite frankly. We could see it right in here. Uh, but what you could also do is just show alternates for selection. So that's essentially what's popping up uh, in this little box right down here. So here, this might be an easier way. As I crank this up, this is an easier way to see all those alternates. And for that one Y, we have what, four, six, eight, 12, 16, 18, 24 different whys. Why? Because you can. <laughs> yes, uh, Melinda, I think, uh, I would love to hear if anybody knows of any other fonts that have a lot of alternates. Like I'll select this B. Again, this B is super elaborate. Look at, look at how crazy that is. But why not? Let's go with it, right? Shrink that down, right? We're gonna be really simple with the and the. We're gonna do, we're gonna stick with the same premise. We want the thickness to kind of be the same. We need to match the thickness and I would probably match that X height, something like that. 
I don't know, we'll just, we won't mess with it and that right now because it's really hardly supposed to be noticeable. And the thing is, uh, it, is that uh, it doesn't, um, the and that isn't even needed. Everybody knows if you say beauty beast, everybody fills in the blank, right? Howard, what's up? Good to see ya. So let's go with the beast font, right? What do we do here? Again, we can have some fun with this. Going in, we'll just isolate beast. Actually, no, we will keep it with within context of what we're, we're looking at. And then we can change this as well to something else. Is it handwritten? Is it serif? Is it slab serif? Right, maybe a slab serif, a big fat slab serif might work for this. It needs to be bulky and like in your face. I'm gonna show you one right now, by the way. I'm gonna go to all classes. Um, if I happen to not find a font that uh, I like on my desktop, I can jump out here to Typekit. So, excuse me, Typekit. <laughs> uh, why does it say Typekit? This is Adobe Fonts, by the way. I thought that would be changed, but uh, either way, these are unlimited fonts pretty much that we can work with. We can type in Beast right here, and this gives us a more elegant way to pursue the title. Um, what's up, Rufus? Good to, good to have you here. Rufus, being a type master, is probably going to be judging me based on my fonts. So, super interesting. But I don't even rely so much on myself, but I look at uh, the Adobe Fonts crew. And I'm going to say, hey, you know what? For Adobe Fonts, just go ahead and show me all of the, the fonts that will work well for headings, right? And that will help me filter those down. And the weight, I want it to be super heavy and bold. Give me those big, bold fonts, as you see right here, okay? So this gives me, ooh, Blenny, like I love Blenny. Guess what? I've already activated it. And that's what I'd wanna do. Type in the text right here, uh, kind of, and just kind of work through all of these and see which ones you like. Currently, I'm doing all. I can refine that some more, uh, but I'm looking for something big and boldy. And personally, I do think um, like a slab serif. I'm kind of just into slab serifs but this is where I'd find that font that I want. Uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna sync one of these fonts, by the way, coming in here. Um, oh, I'm so glad I, I, I like Blenny. It's actually already synced to my desktop, which is fantastic. Uh, let's go with this one, Madrone. Here's Madrone, and you can see this one. We can activate the Madrone font. Uh, by the way, there's only w one standard regular. I can activate all the fonts right here, but that's gonna be available to me. There's Madrone. Madrone's probably not gonna be the one I'm gonna use, but as we take a look right in here, M-A-D, wait for it. Make sure you turn off, Turn off any filtering. If, if the, um, the font doesn't come up, either it's still being synced or you have something turned on in here. So make sure you don't have that turned on. M-A-D. And by the way, you also have to spell it correctly. So you have one job ahead of you. <laughs> the hardest thing you need to do is just remember the font. But guess what? You can actually sort by recently added. So again, there's uh, Madrone, standard, regular, Boom, we can try that on for size. You get the idea. Uh, let's move on. I got a thousand more things to show you, by the way. It's so much I wanna show you. I went up, went with a different font, by the way, that I really enjoyed. Let's go with it right now. Uh, I like this, it's actually called Beastly, okay? Um, but just one last thing, here's like sorting by similar fonts. So if I like Beastly, for instance, I can select Beastly and I can show me the similar fonts to Beastly, which are none, because it's that crazy. But I love, I just, I'm kind of into Beastly for some reason. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not gonna work. It's almost too decorative. I think based on the, uh, the curls in the word beauty, it's kind of getting in the way, but you kind of see what I'm going for. Fantastic. So yeah, isn't that impressive? Didn't you see that actually, you know what? I don't even really have to, let's duplicate this font. Take a look right in here. Um, I can sh show serif fonts on my desktop. And uh, yeah, just work that way is typically what I wanna do. Um, and then jump out to Adobe Fonts when I wanna find a font, sync it, 
and then we're good to go. Okay, here's another thing that I wanna point out for this word beast. What if I want this to be all caps? Do you wanna go in and type that out? E-A-S-T, oh, there's not E, hold on, E. Do you have to type that out in all caps? No, you don't. You don't wanna do that at all, typically. Type in B-E-A-S-T, you open up the character panel right here, and sure enough, make sure you are showing uh, all options, like show everything, show show all the alternates and everything. Uh, but right down in here, you can say, hey, you know what, make this all caps, even though behind the scenes, it's lowercase, right? All right, yes, Nora, it does look, it looks very saloony. I like that it, uh, it looks a little like old world, and I thought of this, like this just old world, like, you know, this beast. I don't know. It's kind of where I ended up. Plus, it's just fun. Right. That's the only reason. It's just fun. So, uh, again, that's one way to tackle it. We could see this final version. You know, we could see this version where it's a combination of everything that we've just done. From our concept one, right, to our concept two that was requested, concept three, Wait for it, something like that, and then kind of like the final, which is okay. So let's go on to manipulating type, right? We understand how type works. We've picked the correct fonts, and now we're putting them into practice. Let's start manipulating those fonts in a non-destructive way, if that works for you. And again, just referencing back to, um, you know, the agenda, which is, again, using those alternate glyphs, manipulating text non-destructively, and adding some fun effects. I want to do something crazy like this, if that sounds good. Yes! Ah! San Kalp? Ah! I'm so happy. Like, if literally all I do is show you how to uh, use clipping masks, that's like half the battle, right? Fahrenheit 451. Same process, right? I'm going to jump into libraries. I'm going to search on fire, right? I hopefully have some fire, some flames. It's actually searching based on results from Adobe Stock, right? I can grab this and I can say, hey, you know what? Save a preview to my current library. There it is, right? Dropping that in, right? Clipping masks. Again, we want to use those on 451. You could right click create clipping mask. I usually just hold down the alt key and click, and then it masks it out just like that. So this is the easy way. This is the easy concept, by the way, for this book, Fahrenheit 451. Um, Ray Bradbury? Am I, am I, do I have that correctly? I hope I have the author correct. Um, so, so yeah, I could do this. This is the easy solution, by the way. I think this is totally just the easy solution. I thought this, this might be one concept that we work with, right? But what if we go beyond that? And what if, since this is all about book burning, what if the cover of this book actually looks like it's on fire? I think that's a more interesting concept. Let's like make it look like it's on fire. So this is what we're gonna go. We're gonna get rid of that. In fact, we'll group this. Command G, Command J to duplicate that layer. We have two concepts. We got a job to do. Thank you, Steve. Ray Bradbury, it'd be terrible if I did not remember. Concept one, concept two. I know I didn't spell that right. It's okay, nobody has to know. Uh, Non-destructively, so anytime I start to apply a filter, let's take uh, you know this 451 for instance. I want to go into distort and I want to like wave this, right? And this is what it says. It says, hey, you know what? You're going to rasterize this? Are you nuts? No, we want to convert it to a smart object, okay? So I actually want to do that in advance and actually I'm going to do that with both of these, these text items. So selecting them both, I know in order to apply a filter, I want to make it a smart object. Boom, making it a smart object. And here it is as one smart object. It means that it is a separate PSD, more specifically PSB, right? Done and done. So let's go back. Oh, oh. Here's the original. Filter, distort, wave. And then we have what we see right in here. 
I personally think, how do you mix patterns with text? Oh, we're gonna be getting into all that. I'm so glad you asked. I love Wave, by the way. I think Wave gives you the most controls. Like, look at all these options. Your goal is just to play, excuse me, just to play around with this. Play around with this rippling like it just caught on fire and it's it's a page that caught on fire, right? So we'll just play with this and get something nice. Kind of a little warped, but we still have to make it legible because type has one job ahead of it, which is just to convey information in writing, okay? So if you can't read it, you've failed, <laughs> you know? But let's just kind of have it warp a little bit like that. Absolutely love this, right? We could have a number of generators ready for when I take that up. I, I've never, why does this go up to a thousand? Steve, why does this go up to a thousand? It doesn't ever need to go that high. I just can't, I don't know. I keep it at one, click okay. There we have it. Yes, thank you, Steve's another, that's a good call. Combining uh, with shapes and people and everything using those clipping masks. Um, so here we have our warped text. We can see right over here, this is my uh, smart object, and then we can see the wave filter applied to it. Uh, from there, I'd actually typically like double, I would duplicate this. For the second one, I'll just add a color overlay of, I don't know, uh, yeah, something like that. I'll do something like that. Color overlay of yellow, and then I would change the wave to be something a little bit different like that. So that's what I did. Second copy has a color overlay and it's changed, right? Because I'm just going to make something cool. Okay, same thing for this third one. We will change the color overlay to something else, maybe to a red. And then we'll change the wave. Again, all we need to do is click on it and then change it a little bit more like so, right? So we have this this kind of look, I get it. It's currently madness. It's so madness. You know what's great about this? Is I can mess this up all I want. I can always go in and change it later. Okay, so Daniel and everybody watching, um, the the biggest problem I, I think I see with like people who use Photoshop is they're too busy using filters to simulate something. And oh, by the way, oh, I have not used this in a bit. This is gonna be wild. You ready for this? Ah, uh, you ready for this? Ah, uh, sorry, this is going to take me a second now that it just dawned on me. I'm gonna do this path. Filter. I can't believe I just thought of the um, adding rendering flame, by the way. So here's another case. Since since I'm using, uh, again, I wanna stay on type, by the way, but just to sh in terms of effects, we, have, we can render out a flame. So go to flame, I have my shape, that's the path that I've drawn, and you can see the flame right in here that I can then, uh, you know, randomize and adjust the width of it. Maybe it's a little high. I might wanna take that down a little bit but you can obviously see what I'm doing here, adjusting the, the width of the flame, the length of the flame, uh, the angle if there's a breeze, and all that fun stuff available to you. Uh, so you get the idea, clicking okay, I'm rendering out that flame, which I must say, this is really realistic. Yeah, there's flames in Photoshop, right? It is, it's lit as the kids say. I don't know, does anybody say that? Yeah, there's flames, look, there's the flame. That's crazy. It's crazy stuff, man. It's crazy. What did we just do? Right? So now for my for my text potentially you know, is this inside of that text now, right? Pretty cool. Let's get rid of that working path. Concept number 2, concept number 3. Again, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Paul Tranny. Uh, I'm uh, just showing you how to manipulate type and use type in Photoshop. And we're getting down to the fun part, which is all this, these fi this fire and these flames. I think personally for this concept, I would play with um, the background page color 
again, this just gets into art stuff, but you know, like that. And then I would have maybe duplicate this again. Um, I don't know, just create something like that, right? So there we go. This is a potential better, better uh, like concept, right? Cool. Oh, Iggy Pop, you were so kind. You're just like making my day. Thank you so much. That's so nice. Again, Flames, it's under uh, Render. Uh, but let's go beyond this because I wanted to do something. I kind of liked this and let's see if I can like emulate it some more. This looks like okay, but check this out. There's so much more we can do. Um, let's take, for instance, this, uh, this red right here. Okay, so here's the red color. I can take this and I go into filter, blur gallery, and this time we'll do a path blur because we want to make this like blurry, like fl flames just blur as they go up. They're going to be sharp and then they get super blurry, right? So path blur is what I'd pick right up here. I would say, hey, you know what? Have this swoop upward like that, right? Have this end kind of swoop downward kind of like that and increase the speed of this right kind of like that so this is again we're just mimicking a flame clicking okay that is path blur okay do the same thing with the yellow yellow is back there somewhere same thing again hardly can tell up here Let's give this a little bit more blur. I want to kind of blend that in more and then have that go down. Motion. Okay, you ready? We're going to do that now with our black text right up here at the top. So remember, this is just a smart object. The text is still editable. If I go into path blur again, you know, I do want to actually add this up at the top like that. Maybe I'll get rid of that one. So we'll do like we did before. Maybe it has a little bit of motion, the direction of the type, by the way. Maybe like that. It gets really blurry. I, I, like I said earlier, the, the whole point of type is just to convey information in writing, okay? And I'm losing the type. But I think this is kind of like a neat little trick. You could just draw a line in here. And for this line, you can say, hey, take the speed down to nothing, right? So now in the center, this is perfect. The center line, I don't know why, it looks like it's actually overriding the other blurs. Maybe we'll add a touch to it. But it's a, it's a way to, if you set a line with a blur of nothing, it will make it nothing at that point, right? So this is kind of, again, what I want. Still keeping it legible. Click OK. There we have it. What do we do next? We throw some fun some fun funness to this. I don't know what I have. What do I have? I'll s I don't even know what I would use like this. Let's drop this in, right? Taking this, this looks like light. Sure, we're gonna kind of mimic a flame. It's a little abstract. I probably rotate it this direction, stretch it out right? Something like that. We're going to see how this looks. I'm going to change the blend mode. So kind of going down, we start to get some really interesting things. Here's where I'd change this to something maybe like lighten or screen, right? Now we have that, that lit look, if you will, right? So now this is really coming along. I really like this. From there, I can add a layer mask to that newly added shape, B for brush and just start uh, maybe removing parts of that so I can just read some of it, but just do something like that. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Oh, dystopian look at the future where reading and books are banned. So scary. It's funny, you have the, the world, you have the library of the entire, you have the, you can read the entire human history, like everything available, you can read all that stuff and like nobody does. <laughs> People just read, they want the one sentence summary and I get it, there's too much information, just give me the one sentence summary, right? 
So hopefully you like that. Islam, seems like you do. Fantastic. Let's move on. I have about 20 minutes. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, just to kind of go through here, this is what I'm working on. And we just knocked out this one, Fahrenheit 451. We did this one earlier. Let's dive into some 3D text. Now, I'm first going to preface this and say, hey, you know what? We have Adobe Dimension. Dimension does the, all the fun 3D stuff. What Dimension doesn't do is Dimension doesn't, you know, create... 3D. It's all about compositing 3D the same way Photoshop composites 3D. So I'm not going to be using Dimension. I am making you aware of it because it's awesome. Okay. I'm going to be using Photoshop again just to kind of show you Dimension. This is what it looks like. The cool thing is I can actually uh, search uh, Adobe Stock. I can access, um, you know, uh, models and map like flowers to it like I'm doing here. That's one way of doing things. Um, so that's typically what you do. That's dimension. Let's move on. That's my dimension pitch. Uh, now I have these two. Let's uh, let's start with this one. Let's all start with this world word life. Okay. So I kind of come over here. Here, here we could see it, this word life. Uh, how was this made or how, how would you actually tackle this? Well, let's have this word life type it in nine times out of ten um, you're going to be using uh, sort of a probably a sans serif font center in Photoshop and you're combine, combining this with imagery you want the font to be as simple as possible this one is probably the most basic font ever by the way Alfran I'm not even Al Alfarn um, and uh, so, so how would we do this? How do we make this look 3D? So what would people do? Like, I don't know, you would just probably like, I don't know, am I gonna duplicate that layer and like move it over and like, I don't know, do I add a drop shadow? I don't know how to do this, right? We could do that. We can add that drop shadow. Let's actually try that. Drop shadow, distance, like that. That's the best we can do with layer styles. But I want that long, gorgeous shadow. So. In order to do that, let's actually make this 3D. So um, here, we are, here we have life. I usually like to open up the 3D panel, super easy and friendly. I have my text selected, and I'm gonna say, hey, you know what, extrude that text. Click Create. It's gonna extrude it and actually changes my 3D panel. It gives me my text with all the different materials, the lighting and all that fun stuff. And what did it do? Yeah, there it is fantastic right i can use my move tool and like rotate. let's undo that oh, let's redo all right i have literally i'm so hard on my keyboard i literally broke the command key <laughs> uh, i can select scene and now i'll use the move tool to adjust the scene right we have that 3d look command h we can hide it okay so we're heading the right direction with some of this right we can see that we could rotate this text. Um, notice how there's a shadow there, right? So I can say, hey, you know what? For the scene, cancel, sorry about that. Here we go. We'll go to the current view. For the current view, let's just go ahead and make it the default view. So there's the front view, right? Look at my light source, by the way. Um, my light source is right here. So I can actually start to get that long shadow if I want to. Current view, let's like rotate this up. You start to see this shadow. Oh yeah, that shadow is what I want. Okay, so you ready for this? We're gonna take this life. We'll just, I think this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, rotate it, let's rotate it up. Let's actually literally grab this object. Oh look, rotate tool. Rotate it so it's standing on its head. And guess what? You have individual properties for that. You're saying, hey, rotate it 90 degrees, not 72. Because again, you'll work with those controls and you realize I need something exact. Let's have it stand up. Boom, it's standing up. Guess what? We'll grab the current view. There's my long shadow, right? And now I can start to play with that light and get that long shadow, right? Just like so. Let's go to current view real fast. Let's change this to the top view. And now we have that flat look and uh, the uh, ability to control the, um, the light source, right? 
by the way, um, this gets a little, this even gets more interesting, right? I have this long shadow. It's sharp. How do I change the color of things? First off, what if I would have misspelled this? I can literally select the, the text, which happens to be 3D. I'll go over here to my properties panel. You see this, Austin? Check this out. 3D is cool. My properties panel, look. I can change the extrusion and do all sorts of crazy things. And I can also just edit source. Click. Oh, thank you very much. There it is. Come in here, change this to live like that. Save it, close it. And then you can see it's obviously changed there. Ah, awesome. Ray, I'm so glad you like this. So again, this gives you like so much flexibility. It's crazy. And that's why I love it. It does take a little, a little time to work out because it's all going to be, um, it's all a matter of what you have selected in your 3D panel. So consider this your like new layers panel. Be aware of what's selected because that's what you're gonna move using the move tool, right? Right now I'm selecting light and I'm moving it accordingly, right? I can go into environment, by the way. Let me show you a couple more things. I wanna change the, uh, sh let me just see if I get this right, shadow color. No. Color of the environment, clicking okay. Uh, here we go. Yes, it is the shadow. I want to change the color of the shadow to red. It's only at 60%. We'll crank that up even more, up to 100%. And we'll take that color down to zero. That doesn't matter. But uh, hide. There we go. So there's the idea, right? We can see that red shadow. Now, um, let me show you one more thing real fast. Ready for this? I have about 10 minutes. I'll go into current view. I'll, I'll manipulate this accordingly. Maybe I want to change this a certain way. This actually looks pretty good. I like these hard lines, by the way. I really like these hard lines. Let's rotate it. I don't know, some, some sort of way. Uh, but I wanted to show you some of the render settings. Command H, here we go. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. Um, wait for it. I just wanted to show some of the sides and let's just go ahead and turn off the shadows altogether. There we go. Um, environment, I'm going to crank this up a little bit, right? So you have these different, um, there we go, different shades of gray. I just wanted to point out right in here, if you select the scene, you actually have the ability to do like an unlit texture. So if you ever want a really flat style, that's what unlit texture does. Now I have this flat style. Uh, which might be what I want if I'm doing something maybe at an angle like that, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's move on from there. Uh, what I ended up doing, by the way, to make this, where you can turn on L, I, F, E. How's these, how do these get changed? Well, the environment is different. The shadow color for each one and environment is just a different color, and that's how you get this. I could render it out now and then it will be clean because I get it. It's not clean right now. Um, it, it, once I render it out, it's going to be perfectly fine. Okay, so let's kind of go on to this uh, a little further. <laughs> Michelle, I'm sorry. I do not mean to cause strife between you and your husband and if you end up, you know, playing with 3D all night. But let me take this to the next level as well. Something like this. Look at this. This is like super cool, right? This done in a 3D fashion, which I absolutely love, right? So again, look at this. Give me that flexibility. Look. Shoop, 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 shoop. Very cool, right? How is this done? This is all about mapping text onto a 3D cube. Okay, so turning that off, we'll go in here. Uh, right over here, instead of making an extrusion from something there, we can say, hey, you know what? Make a cube. You know, use one of these preset shapes. Everything's made up of basic shapes, 
right? There's my cube, click create, and here I have it. Same idea, Command H, there it is. Uh, and I can kind of rotate that around. Ooh, this is interesting. That's interesting. Look at how it made it purple. It's because my layer that I had selected was purple. So it will take whatever you have and map that as the image uh, right on there. But I'm just gonna do a new layer and do a cube. Um, really fast, again, I wanna rush through this because I don't have a lot of time. Let's kind of move this over. We get how to manipulate this all day long. We wanna put some text on this, right? Move this over, zoop. Ah, I need it. I wanted to get into displacement maps too. But here's my uh, object. It's gonna be the front material. So here, front material, we go into properties. Here's the material. We could edit this texture and this is the material. And all I need to do is add some type right in here. Um, so, uh, uh, E, L, E, Michelle, there you go. Here you are, Michelle, taking this, zoop, making it larger. That's just called a default, you know, layer right there, Michelle. We'll take the right side as well, edit that texture, and is it okay if I use your name? I should have asked. Is that okay, Michelle? I'm sorry, don't, I hope it's okay. <laughs> I should, probably should have asked. Right. Typically what I do in these two situations, since I want these to be the exact same, um, I will open up the front material, put this off to the side, on this side. This is my right material. Why are those different sizes? I don't know. But either way, I would want to line those up potentially. Uh, you get the idea. Going back into my crayons PSD, we could see it right there. Um, and again, we just put that on a box. If we go into the properties for it. Um, I could take the opacity down. There's a couple other things I'd want to do. I don't really have time to get into it. Um, but you'd want to, if you want to knock out the actual texture, um, you know, what I'd actually do is I would just change this. Let's just change that to, you know, that color. I'm just going to make this easy by changing those colors like so. Current view, no, scene, unlit texture. Right, here's your unlit texture now. And uh, taking this cube, we can rotate it. Right, so there you go. There you have your sort of like your 3D um, text on a block, giving you full control uh, is the idea, right? And you can see that's how this is put together as well. As I turn this on, this is done the same way, right? Zooming out, this is the block. We can select the front material. Guess what? The front from front material is that text as expected. Okay. Done. Done. Full control. Throw a little pizzazz on it right there, just with um, a gradient blend mode, and you can see you have that. Oops. Undo. you know, ability to manipulate this all day long. Cool. Uh, oh, Michelle, you're too kind. So hopefully this, this again, gets you inspired. My goal was to show you how to do things non-destructively as well. You know, you want to be able to have that text. The text is still editable, editable because they're individual materials, right? We can see them right in here, right? We get how that works. Uh, let's close that one. Same thing for the Fahrenheit 451. All this text editable. Um, editable text this is editable because chances are i would misspell this german word right and that's the goal keep things editable uh so you can go back in and change it later based on you or the client uh and then move forward from there okay uh 
Yeah, so you could also, and Melinda, you could use, this 3D stuff will be useful for trying to make 3D logos as a guide for Illustrator. Yeah, you could use them as 3D, and you could also do the reverse of that is, you know, go from Illustrator into Photoshop and add all that pizzazz. This is currently the one I like the most. I'm going to kind of jump in here and kind of show this last one, and I'm going to do it within a couple minutes. You know, we want to do a typography portrait. Here's uh, just a bunch of quotes that I think inspire me that kind of maybe make up like who I am as a person, I don't know, just inspiring quotes. Same process, right click. Let's convert it to a smart object, right? And I wanna put this text wrapping around my face. So I would typically have a, wait for it, boom, typography portrait, this Paul PSD. It happens to be the same size, by the way. I would actually blur this a little bit. I would just give this a little bit of a blur. Right, because that grain, I don't want to worry about that. That grain is going to get kind of bad. But I'll just blur that a little bit. I'll save it. It's just Paul PSD. And now I can begin. I have this text right here. And I can go to Filter, Distort, Displace. Right, again, this style has been done before. But I think it's a pop popular style if you ever search on typography in Photoshop. Um, this is your displacement scale, horizontal, vertical stretch to fit. I just make sure my text goes from edge to edge. Uh, repeat edge pixels. Uh, click OK. Locate the file. Happens to be right down here. I know it's the same size. There it is. Click open. And now you can see that it's distorted the face a little bit. Right? So we could do that. I could even do this again. Let's do displacement again. Why not? get it a little higher. Uh, but from there, I would just typically take the, you know, maybe the photo, put it on top, and then play with the blend modes. So there we go. Change that to darken. That's literally done within two minutes, just in time for me to wrap up. So hopefully you appreciate that. That's a displacement map uh, heading the right direction, and uh, you get the idea. So we've covered quite a bit. Can you believe it? Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Again, all of this stuff, right? All of this covered. Um, some of this wasn't, but this is just so you know, this is 3D text integrated within a 2D scene, and these are layer masks. But that's all I have for you. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, my name is Paul Tranny, and uh, we learned a lot today. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this. Uh, hit me up on all the social medias. Uh, be happy to uh, share more with you. Uh, as well as, as I kind of move forward. I'll be live next Friday as well. So thanks so much, everyone. I will let you go. Uh, I appreciate you, Austin and Ang and uh, Bell. Apparently only people with Ariana. Thank you. Everybody with an A in their name needs to go ahead and respond right now because we got four in a row. <laughs> so thanks so much, everyone. Have a uh, beautiful day. I'll just kind of leave you with this screenshot. And thanks so much for hanging out with me. You guys are awesome. We will see you next week. Thanks so much.